Do you know much about artificial intelligence? Do you know how it is used? Do you know the current events surrounding artificial intelligence? Hi, I am Olympia Lapointe, founder of AnswersUnleashed.com and the author of the award-winning Answers Unleashed science book series. I am excited because I am teaching an artificial intelligence class at Santa Monica College Emeritus Program. It's a program open for anyone to enroll. And in my artificial intelligence class, I am showing you the basics of artificial intelligence, the current events of artificial intelligence in the news, and how you can know how to stay safe with its use. I am excited because this information completely aligns with my background. For those that you, for those of you who do not know, I was a rocket scientist for nearly a decade, and I helped launch 28 NASA space shuttle missions into space using my degrees of mathematics. These degrees of mathematics is the same foundation of artificial intelligence. And I have the ability to give presentations through my TED Talks so people understand the decisions that they can make to make emerging technology a helpful innovation for the future. And not only that, I've been teaching mathematics for over 14 years as a math professor. And so I am honored to come to Santa Monica College Emeritus Program and share what I know. I have prepared a video for you. It's a lesson to help you understand why artificial intelligence exploded onto the market. In this video, it's gonna give you the background of artificial intelligence, the three scientists who developed a fast way of machine learning within artificial intelligence, and it will give you the reason why the artificial intelligence exploded on the market after the pandemic. I hope that you enjoy this particular lecture, and I hope that artificial intelligence is gonna make a little more sense to you. Here we go. This presentation is the history of AI and it's how and why AI exploded onto the market in 2023. I am Professor Olympia Lapointe and this is from our political science class E zero zero from Santa Monica College Emeritus. What is artificial intelligence? I know you may be asking that question. Artificial intelligence is the ability of machines to perform tasks that are typically associated with human intelligence and such tasks as learning and problem solving. Artificial general intelligence, known as AGI, is a hypothetical future case defined by when an autonomous system surpasses a human's capabilities. So again, artificial intelligence, AI, is the ability for machines to problem solve. And AGI is a hypothetical future when computers and computer systems can do things faster than humans. In this particular lecture, we're gonna find out why people are talking about artificial intelligence. Although artificial intelligence, machine learning specifically has existed and has been applied since the 1980s, a recent development in generative AI became a tool that is extremely helpful. But when, it, when placed in the wrong hands, it can be deadly. In this particular, lesson, we're going to look at a couple of things. We're going to understand the timeline of generative AI. We're going to understand the types of artificial intelligence. We're going to understand the Nobel Prize winners for machine learning and see how that fed into the explosion of AI with the pandemic. And we're also going to look at current news policies and concerns with the generative AI. So this particular video is giving us a basis of what artificial intelligence is 
so we are more familiarized with how it works and what the concerns are. I put this on the screen. It's a mixer and it has uh, a mixer, it has a bowl, it has cake. You may be wondering what on earth does this have to do with artificial intelligence? <laughs> but suppose that you were a person who wanted to create a business of making different cakes and selling them and having them distributed in different stores. You'd have to make different parts of this process work. You'd have to sell multiple flavored cakes in stores by finding a person with a recipe, getting the ingredients, getting a mixer. You'd have to know the time it would take to bake in the oven. And not only that, you would have to make sure that the, the food passed safety checks and then the store would sell your product and then there would be customers that would buy it. So there's a, several different layers to this system of selling multiple types of cakes to a store. Well, the same type of idea runs with artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is creating something that's gonna solve a problem and it's a product. And it's multiple different products that are being sold. If we look at the same concept of baking a cake, we're gonna look at the same process within artificial intelligence. For example, a person with a recipe would be the uh, the AI programmer, the person that sits down and creates the mathematical system. The ingredients, just like there would be a, a store where you would go and buy the flour, the sugar, the butter, there would be a store for that. Well, in the AI world, the store is the data company that holds the data, the ingredients that goes into the artificial intelligence. You have a mixer. A mixer is what mixes up the food together so it gives you the proper consistency. Well, in the artificial intelligence world, that's called the large language model or the model that actually mixes the data up to give you the combination that you need. And then the time in the oven for the cake would be the exact same as the machine learning time. How much time does it take for your data to be processed to give you a, an outcome. And then this is really interesting. You would have to pass food safety checks if you're gonna sell food in the store. The same would be true for artificial intelligence. It would have to pass some sort of regulatory safety checks to make sure it's actually operating correctly. And we're gonna talk about how that doesn't necessarily exist for all types of artificial intelligence yet. And just like the store would sell the products, well, you would have a software company to sell the app or sell the, the solution in which is being offered. Uh, is it going to, is the solution going to be fast video rendering or is it going to be uh, creating great new images on headshots with AI? So, in any case, both cases end out in the same way. There's a consumer buying the product. So if we keep this in mind, where there are ingredients, there are is a recipe holder, there's a mixer, there is the time in the oven, the food safety checks, how the store sells the product and the customer, and we keep that in mind for artificial intelligence, this is the same process. There's an AI programmer, there is the data company that holds the data. There's the large language model that mixes it together. There's machine learning that bakes it together. So you have an outcome. Hopefully the outcome is checked by a regulatory safety agency. And then it's given to a software company and you have a consumer that is buying it. Now, innovation happens regularly. For example, this is called an S-curve. It's when you have innovation happening on a regular basis. And we've seen this happen before in the past. Around every 50 years, you have inventions that happen. Uh, for example, the printing press was an invention, the light bulb, nuclear energy, and then the regulatory agencies around nuclear energy to make sure people weren't going to be creating nuclear bombs. Uh, you have the internet, uh, you have cell phones, and 
In each one of these cases, around every 50 years, there's a major invention that catapult the technology into a new direction. And so within artificial intelligence, there was these moments in time that catapulted artificial intelligence to rapidly grow and really build up its, its usage. And I've identified those four key moments here. And this is, this is what you're going to get from this video and nowhere else. There's four phases. I estimate there's four major phases to artificial intelligence that really grew its usage. Number one was the development phase where there was different types of AI that was formed. Phase two was when the scientists actually created a faster way of machine learning that the AI could, if you will, bake the information really really quickly. <laughs> and then there was the pandemic that had everyone using the computers. And in that process, the, all the data was being held into these computer systems. And lastly, you had the generative AI that exploded on the market because there was all this data available. So we're going to look at these four phases in a timeline. This is the generative AI timeline. So we're going to look at when AI was developed and the new technology was formed, and that was happened around 1980 all the way through 2019. Then we're going to look at in 2019 when three scientists won the Nobel Peace Prize for computing. We're going to look at how they um, contributed to the outcome of artificial intelligence. And then we're going to look at the video conferencing that happened in the pandemic and why that was so critical to how artificial intelligence was built. And then we're going to look at how generative AI spawned from all of that data and how people are using artificial intelligence given all the data that was found in the pandemic. So this is our concept that we're going to look at today. The first part that we're going to look at is how the AI was developed. And uh, this is this is really interesting. Uh, a lot of people don't know that AI was developed a long, long, long time ago, 1980. I was actually in elementary school during this time period. I think, no, 1980, I must have been like right before elementary school. I want to point out something to you before we go into this part. In order to sell multiple computer outputs, there has to be an AI programmer. Now, what you're going to see in these next charts is how the programmer changed what he or she did based on creating new computer products to be on the be sold on the market. In 1980, there was the development of both a computer coder and an AI system. Uh, basically what an AI system does is it looks at different text images and it tries to determine what is going on by a picture. So it will analyze the picture and give you information based on the picture. That's basically how artificial intelligence started in the 1980s. So I want to distinguish the difference between a computer coder and an AI system. And this is really interesting. A computer coder is somebody who is a computer programmer. They will tell the system everything he or she wants it to do. So you put in good information, good information comes out. It's usually one type of output. That is different than an AI system. An AI system, actually what we call it machine learning type of system, is when the computer program makes a computer programmer, which is a person, makes the system and develops the system in such a way that the computer system itself figures out what to do. So there doesn't have to be somebody necessarily standing over it to make sure it has a certain outcome. So good information in is this a part where good information comes out. AI system is information goes in, multiple things come out. That's the big difference between the systems. We've dealt with the computer coder system since the 1980s, but the AI system, we've been seeing it develop. And let me show us how. Machine learning is when 
this information that you put into the computer program is, is finding information from large data sets. And it creates a conclusion or an output from this large data set. We've seen since the 1980s AI being used. And let me break this down. Uh, in the 1980s, we saw AI being used with ATM machines. For example, if you put your check into the ATM, you would have your ATM machine identify if it's a five or an eight to know whether or not it should give $500 or $800. That was one of the first initial uses of it. And then fax machines. And then in the 1990s, we had GPS navigation systems. Then we had cell phone data. Remember the flip phones? Well, all that data had to be stored somewhere. And then in order to store it, there was the, the development of artificial intelligence. And then in 2000, data mining helped prevent terrorist threats and terrorist threat detection was formed using social media platforms. So artificial intelligence went through different social media platforms to determine if there could be a potential uh, risk. And then uh, it later moved to voice recognition on smart devices and then driverless cars. And we've seen a progression of this particular artificial intelligence, but in, I wanted to point out an issue. AI could not check itself if it gave the correct results. And here's an example. We've seen a lot of self-driving cars have accidents on the road where there's been deaths. That is a case in which the computer system didn't necessarily know it was operating in a way that wasn't correct. The conclusion is that the results are only as good as the data that you put into an AI system. We have multiple types of AI. And so I'm going to break down what AI is and the tested true forms of AI and then the emerging forms of AI so you understand what goes on with the different types of artificial intelligence. Traditional AI is when you look at conventional patterns. This is called traditional AI, classic AI, conventional AI, and it uses a mathematical algorithm to search big data sets. For example, if you go on Google and you type in a search, let's say you type in your name for a search, it goes through an algorithm to pull out every single web page where your name would be. The same thing for YouTube. If you put in, how do I knit uh, knit a scarf, <laughs> you have a, a lot of different YouTube videos that come out. And that's because it's traditional AI is going through all this data and picking out the parts in which you're asking it for. And it's not just in search engine optimization on YouTube and Amazon and Netflix. It's also for fraud detection. So people that are using uh, traditional AI is uh, the people who are stock trading, there's the doctors are looking at it for medical diagnosis when uh, they do mammograms. Um, there's also a, a detection for a terrorist threat so they can keep borders safe. So this type of traditional AI has been tested and it is something that is traditional and something that is quite accurate. It's pretty good in a lot of different areas. So this type of artificial intelligence is very helpful. There's another type of artificial intelligence. It's called predictive AI. Predictive AI is when you have a large, large set of historical data and the predictive AI will predict what's gonna happen next based on all that data. For example, do you remember the hurricanes that happened here in California? Or do you remember seeing the hurricanes that was about to approach California a couple of weeks ago? Well, this was a hurricane in the, um, it was a hurricane in the Pacific Ocean, which was rare. If anybody knows about meteorology, hurricanes usually do not happen in the Pacific Ocean because the water temperatures is between 60 and 65 degrees, which usually doesn't take on a warm hurricane weather. However, there was predictive AI that determined the storm's path. And this path predicted based on large data sets, 
from satellites on where more than likely this storm would go. And it was very helpful because the scientists could, could warn people how to stay safe before the event happened. So predictive AI is also a reliable type of artificial intelligence and it can make accurate predictions. And it's used in many different places like stock markets. Uh, it's In stock markets, there's a predictive math called Brownian motion that artificial intelligence use. And this is the type of mathematics uh, that I learned in graduate school at California State University Northridge. Now, there, here's the latest form of what we call generative AI. This is the new AI that people are talking about in the media. Generative AI is the new AI in the news. It takes diff a different approach than the traditional AI and then the predictive AI. What it does is it focuses on cutting from pre-existing content of images, voices, and text, and it puts it together to create new content using this large language model. It's like the mixer. Remember how I, I put that picture up? It's with the mixer. It takes all these pieces of data from all these different places, from the internet, from your cell phone, from your text messaging, from your business servers, from other people's, other people's data. And it puts it all together to create something completely new. And what's new is actually fake. They're called deep fake videos and deep fake images. So these are individuals who look like they are real, but it is not the real person. It's not the real person. It is a fake person. It's a fake generative uh, form of, of product content. And so the question is how did this come about? Why are people using generative AI and how did people create this type of new um, artificial intelligence? So now that we understand the types of AI, we're now going to look at three mathematicians that changed the way machine learning time happened within the AI. Now, remember the machine learning time, if we use the cake example, it's like, how long does the cake stay in the oven? <laughs> if you find an approach where the cake doesn't have to stay in the oven as long, you can make more cakes. Well, that is the idea that these three scientists had. They found a way for the artificial intelligence to process the information at a much faster rate so it could generate more information quickly. These three scientists, Yeshua Bingio, Jeffrey Hinton, and Jan LeCun are the Nobel Peace Prize winners for the Computing Award for Computer Programming Artificial Intelligence. In 2019, these scientists won the Nobel Prize. It was called the Turing Award for Machine Learning. Then technology firms began to use their strategies for new revenue. And we're gonna look at what they did so it makes sense to us. Generative AI has a timeline and machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence. And it was being processed really, really slow. But these three scientists found a way to process it extremely fast so this type of artificial intelligence could produce more information, more content. And remember, the content is being able to read images, listen to text, uh, well, read text and listen to voices to create content. When the computer system figures out what to do, that is called machine learning. Machine learning time drastically changed with these individuals and their particular mathematical formula. These award-winning scientists found a way to shorten the machine, learn, machine learning time by using 
tools in probability mathematics and statistics. Specifically, the award was for deep learning, which is a probabilistic prediction to know if the image, sound, or text is what you think it is. So after they figured this out, they won the award, and then technology companies wanted to further employ their findings and make profit from generating new technology at a faster rate. There's different types of machine learning. There's supervised machine learning, there's unsupervised machine learning, there's semi-supervised learning, and there's reinforcement learning. Now, I don't test anyone in my Artificial Intelligence Santa Monica College Emeritus Program because this program is simply for you to watch and learn. So I want you to simply digest what I'm sharing with you here, and it's really, really going to make sense to you. And as you watch this, you're probably going to be more knowledgeable than some of the best people out there who think they know what's going on. Let's look at supervised machine learning first. This is the one here. Supervised machine learning is when you teach an AI model how to do an action, like identify a number on a check. Is it a two or is this a seven? Is this a five or, this is, an, or is this an eight? And you have humans telling it if they got the answers right or wrong. So at the very start of artificial intelligence, you had ATMs accepting money, but you also had the, the tellers ensuring that the numbers that were on the check and in the machine were giving out the right money. There's unsupervised type of machine learning. This is when you're writing a rule or an algorithm that tells the AI to detect something. Like for example, is this red? Is this green? Is this yellow? When it looks at a pixel detection. So you see this in a lot of different type of AI um, face smoothing tools that you see people using on social media. This is when you have an unsupervised machine learning system that will identify different colors. That's an example. Then you have semi-supervised. It's a machine learning technique that uses a small portion of labeled data and lots of unlabeled data to train a predictive model. Let's say you own a bank and you have 10 million users. You're not gonna analyze all 10 million users. So what you do is you sample maybe 5% and then you determine if their transactions are fraud or a safe transaction. This happens all the time. For example, if you just swiped your card in Beverly Hills and then your card is being run in Colorado, the semi-supervised machine learning AI would indicate there could be some fraudulent activity happening on your credit card. Reinforced learning, that's a type of machine learning as well. This is when you are training to identify an object, then reinforce the, it with the correct answer, if it's right or wrong. For example, is this a bottle of water? Yes, okay, then that's the correct output. No, then the answer is wrong. Reinforced learning is really uh, for robotics. If you wanted to teach a robot to go towards picking up a bottle of water versus picking up a dog, you would want to have the robot to be able to know what it's picking up. So these types of machine learning in these different categories give us all these different applications. For like supervised learning, we have uh, weather forecasting, we have population growth, and, and as well as pandemic predictions. For unsupervised learning, we have things like um, targeted marketing, uh, targeted marketing. We have customer segmentation, so you know who you're going to be marketing to. For reinforcement learning, you have uh, sometimes robots or, or game, artificial intelligence using this. So there's different types of applications of machine learning. 
And these three scientists were able to look at how to make the machine learning happen faster. Now, with the three scientists, 2019, the whole world was kind of at a as talking about how do we use this new way of processing information that these three scientists created. Then guess what happens? The pandemic happens in 2020. This is when video conferencing went skyrocketing high because billions of people over the entire planet needed to communicate while they were sheltering inside to keep themselves alive. Remember this list that I had before? There's individuals that have the data, just like a baker would go to a store to buy flour and to buy butter. Well, there's these companies where an artificial intelligence programmer would go to buy data. They need data in order for them to make a product that they're gonna sell. In 2020, the pandemic happened and it was just horrible. There were millions and millions of people across the entire world that died. The public health emergency of international concern was created and the World Health Organization suggested everybody shelter in place. Countries went into lockdown. They started using video conference technology on Zoom, Skype, Instagram, Microsoft Teams, Twitch, Facebook. And this was really interesting because all of these programs needed something for it to work. It needed a graphics card, these graphic chips. You see, every single one of your computers has a graphics chip in it, and that allows your computer to read pictures and images. This is a typical picture of a graphics processing unit, and it's a computer chip that renders graphics and images by performing rapid mathematical calculations. GPUs are used for both professional and personal use from computing. Inside everyone's computer is an internal computer graphics card. Every single person has one. And these graphic cards companies like NVIDIA and Intel make computer chips to place into electronic devices so you can watch videos. Companies like Samsung and Apple have cell phone graphics cards too. And they capture the information that is seen and processed in images, in voice and in text rendering. Here's an example, this is just amazing. These are graphics cards and they're made of materials like uh, copper, boron, cobalt, tungsten, and they have to operate really fast and they have to carry energy really fast. And what goes through this is mathematical calculations and data about what images are being transported on your computer. And these graphics cards are very helpful. For example, if you use Adobe Premiere Pro and you're editing videos, or if you're in the movie industry, you have to have some sort of really fast graphics uh, card in your computer so it works and renders the type of video sound and editing in a fast enough way for you to relay information. Well, all of the people across the entire world during the pandemic had to use these graphics cards. Every single person across the world had to use these graphics card chips. And that information was mathematical information that had to be housed and stored about people's faces, people's texts. Billions and billions and billions of texts and images and videos went across the world. These companies, Intel and NVIDIA and other companies, had to capture the data and render it in a really fast way. Because the pandemic forced these companies to render the data really quickly, they started using the machine learning that the three scientists built and received the Nobel Peace Prize for. The companies that made the graphics cards and chips contain the data for the AI companies to use within machine learning models. 
whoever owns the data owns the business revenue from AI. So they, in a sense, they're like the company that owns the flour, the butter, and the sugar so the cake can be made. In this case, some examples are NVIDIA, Intel, Asus, MSI, uh, Apple. These are the companies that create these high-performing chips that contain the mathematical data that artificial intelligence is run off of. Now that we understand the reason why the pandemic contributed to the overall technology of artificial intelligence, now let's look at what's happening now with the generative AI explosion. In February, 2023, companies began to use and sell data from graphic card chips and its use promoted generative AI, an artificial intelligence tool for individuals. Now, remember this process if you wanna sell multiple outputs? Well, you have to have software companies willing to distribute your products. Generative AI is when, again, when you use large amounts of data to create new text images or other media using generative models. Generative AI models are something like ChatGPT, like you've seen in the news, or other type of uh, artificial intelligence, BARD, for example, where it takes information from various different places, from the internet, from your cell phone, from your business servers, from your personal computers, from even your private text messages, and it creates new content based on that. And these models learn from the data. These models learn and create output from viewing all the large amounts of data in a fast way, and it creates an output based on all the data that it's looking at. But here's the issue. Not all the data that it's looking at is accurate. Take, for example, if you go online, there's many different websites that may call out fake news or not real information. The artificial intelligence doesn't know that's fake, and they the artificial intelligence is not like the human mind where it will know something is not accurate and something is not true. So we're seeing a lot of concerns happen with even the people that create the artificial intelligence. For example, Sam Altman of OpenAI, as the founder of ChatGPT, said that the U.S. needed to create a regulatory agency to ensure the companies that sold and use AI were ethically using it. So he suggested that there should be a major regulatory agency in the United States to license the companies that use and sell AI. He suggested shutting down AI when it tries to go rogue, meaning it tries to make up information that's not even accurate. And then three, he says, you need to check all the AI results to make sure that they're okay. There's a lot of people, including some of the founders who received the Nobel Peace Prize who are saying the same thing. So that begs the question is, what is AI doing? Why are people concerned about this? For Sam Altman specifically, he's concerned about a couple of areas in this production. Remember this cake that I introduced us to before? The time that it takes to mix the information together. If it mixes it too fast or mixes it in an incorrect way, you can pull the plug to the mixer, turn it off. The time in the oven is the exact same thing as the machine learning. You have to know how this information is being processed and what time is it coming out and how is that going to affect the public. And then you have to pass a food safety test if you're going to sell cakes. He's suggesting you need to have an AI regulatory agency to make sure that you can sell AI. And right now that doesn't exist. So I liked putting this one-to-one -one comparison here because we're familiarized with cakes, but since we're not familiarized with artificial intelligence, it makes sense if we 
explain it with a way that we know versus a way that's new so we can see the importance of making sure somebody is checking what's coming out of these outputs and these these outputs from artificial intelligence. Now, again, you can pull the plug on artificial intelligence. Every single programmer knows this fact. They program into the system a way to pull the plug. So if the AI is doing something it doesn't want to do, it stops so it doesn't do it anymore. Every single coder knows how to do this. And then right now, there's no regulatory safety checks yet. That is the biggest issue. And that brings up ethical and legal concerns. Legal and policy concerns about artificial intelligence is really important right now. And I'm excited because we get a chance to talk about this in our class. And we're gonna be looking at why artificial intelligence can be uh, legal and policy concerns for their users. For example, People can, create, you, people can create and distribute harmful content using AI, fake videos, deep fake videos. Uh, elections are coming up soon and there's a concern that people are gonna be using AI to create fake election campaign materials. Uh, copyright and legal exposure uh, issues. Uh, for example, the state of Texas began to ban documents generated by AI because AI was creating false reference court cases in the AI documents in a process called AI hallucinations. This is when the AI is so concerned about creating an output that it will take incorrect information and put it together to present an output. Data privacy violations. Your medical history is all on secure servers. So is all the information at the DMV. If artificial intelligence is used in certain areas, your privacy can be completely put out on the web or be used in places that are not, uh, not great. Uh, sensitive information can be disclosed. For example, there's DNA sites, uh, Ancestry.com and, and 23andMe that have DNA uh, coding in these systems where they look at the large amounts of information that's sensitive medical data. Uh, there's concerns with workforce roles and morale being lost, that people losing their jobs across the entire world because companies feel that artificial intelligence will create a better output faster than humans. And a lot of the executives don't understand quite as well yet that artificial intelligence, although it may be faster, it may not generate accurate results. And then there's also a lack of provenance, data provenance, which is sometimes the information that goes into the system is biased or it's flat out wrong. There's different types of situations where, like for example, if you were to look online to to reference Ben Affleck's height, I think it's six four. But if if a website somewhere says that he's five nine, and AI pulls from that website that he's five nine and generates information about Ben Affleck, the data would be not accurate in that case, and it would completely just give incorrect results, or. Even so, the data can give incorrect results when students are studying and trying to use AI and is pulling out inaccurate information. So you also want to be concerned about the lack of explainability and interpretability. Now, let me explain what this is. Sometimes the mathematics doesn't give you real results in these models. If the original artificial intelligence programmer doesn't know anything about the data in which he's creating a model on, he'll create a model that has an output that doesn't make much sense. And then you want to make sure and reject outcomes based on a model that doesn't explain what's really going on. For example, uh, you wouldn't want a model to determine uh, 
breast cancer versus a cavity. You wouldn't want a AI model to think that uh, a cavity would have to uh, go through chemotherapy. So you want to uh, make sure that the artificial intelligence that is created is modeled correctly and also used correctly to prevent different policy concerns. And there's also ethical concerns. There could be identity theft by AI accessing computer files. There's different ways that uh, AI can access uh, personal files on computers. For example, Congress has banned certain types of general AI on its governmental computers because uh, with certain type of generative AI programs, there can be uh, top secret information pulled from computers and um, distributed. Uh, there are a risk for AI to be uh, accessing home privacy codes, uh, unlocking doors when, when people are not there. There could be false imprisonment and incorrect facial recognition. So that is when um, it's, it's been really happening here in the news. People of color have been falsely imprisoned because the artificial intelligence is not recognizing their face correctly. And this becomes a really huge issue because uh, it's approximately to date, 29 airports across the United States is using facial recognition as a testing tool when people go through airports. There's copyright and trademark infringements where authors and, and musicians are having their work being used and other people's work. And it brings up concern, who's going to be sued for that? Is it the AI program that's going to be sued or it is the person that used the AI that's going to be sued for copyright infringement. So this is something that is uh, really talked about in the news right now. There's also financial targeting for people of poor credit. Uh, each time that you swipe your card in different areas, your credit score goes up or down based on your zip code. And that's what the concerns are within how AI is used within banking and credit ratings. Uh, there's also cybersecurity and advanced attacks on national systems like power grids. There's different ways to override these systems and bypass authentication methods in which um, just lawmakers are trying to avoid. And there could be weapons of mass destruction. Uh, just like the nuclear bomb was developed, there could be artificial intelligence uh, dangers regarding war. And this is something that we're going to see in the news coming up. And we can also see possible attacks on people and uh, introducing different type of genocide tactics based on targeting people with different backgrounds. So right now, there's a lot of concern on how is this generative AI going to be used and how is it going to be used in a way that is authentic and safe for people in their usage of it. Now, these are extreme cases and these are uh, political science questions uh, that over overlap technology questions of emerging technologies. And in our class, we are going to talk about this. I am um, very happy to report that uh, there's, there's people, governmental officials looking to protect humans in situations like this. The White House is looking at the AI Bill of Rights to protect individuals by how their images and information is used within artificial intelligence. And there are international uh, leaders coming together to form a AI regulatory agency to prevent artificial intelligence to be used in different type of mass destruction techniques. So there are leaders coming together, talking about specifically the policies in which they're going to create to keep these things from happening. So that was generative AI and how that exploded onto the market. So this timeline of understanding artificial intelligence since the 1980s with the different types that exist, um, understanding the Nobel Peace Prize winners of how they made the machine learning happen faster than we've seen before, 
And then with the video conferencing and the pandemic, how the graphics card chips gathered everyone's information that then generated new products for generative AI's explosion in 2023. That is the timeline for the foundation of the class in which we are going to discuss and talk about. So remember those phases of innovation? The phase one was the development of the artificial intelligence. Then we had the science that made it faster. Then the data that went into the computer programs that had the ingredients to create the generative AI that is now exploding on the scene in 2023. How do we keep people safe? What policies are needed? Tune into classes with me, Olympia LaPointe at Santa Monica College Emeritus and go to smc.edu slash emeritus to enroll in my class and visit answersunleashed.com slash smc for a schedule of the topics that we're going to talk about as well as to watch this video. Well, there you have it. You have the timeline of generative AI. Now I chose to create a longer than normal lecture because I wanted you to share it with other people online. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to share this video with people that you love so they understand what artificial intelligence is and you share about what you learn at Santa Monica College Emeritus Program. Thank you so much for watching. Tune into AnswersUnleashed.com for more videos. And thank you for learning about artificial intelligence. I am Olympia LaPointe, and I'll see you next time.